Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In the previous video, we used the coefficient of restitution and the conservation of momentum equation in order to solve a one-dimensional collision example. What I'd like to do in this video is take a more scientific look at the coefficient of restitution. So to start off, we're going to be looking at three different time states during this collision. The first is going to be sometime before impact. The last one is going to be sometime after impact. So before impact, we know that our velocity A has to be greater than the velocity of B. Otherwise, there's never going to be a collision. After the impact, we know that the velocity of A has to be less than the velocity of B. Otherwise, they would collide again or move through each other. So what that means is that there are some points in the middle where the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B. And I'm going to call this time 1.5. This happens to coincide with the point of maximum deformation for these two objects. So time 1 is before impact. Time 2 is after impact. And this T1.5 is the point of maximum deformation. So let's talk a little bit about what I mean here. We usually think of these objects as rigid and that they don't deform at all. But in reality, whenever forces are applied to something, they act a little bit like a spring. They kind of compress. When they compress, if they're acting like a spring, that means that they're storing some energy. So if we think of these two objects being smushed together, and they're both compressing, then that means that there's some amount of energy that's being stored in these two. Now, I know that the point of maximum deformation is the same as the point where these two velocities are equal because of the conservation of energy equation. The point of minimum kinetic energy occurs when these two velocities are equal that energy that's being lost needs to go into the deformation of these two objects. The velocities are the same at the time of maximum deformation. There's going to be some force that B is imparting on A. So I'm going to call this the force of B acting on A. Likewise, there's going to be a force that A imparts on B. So this is the force of A acting on B. So from the instant that these two blocks touch to this point of maximum deformation, we're calling the impulse of these forces the deformation impulse. And for shorthand, I'm going to call that impulse D. Now, there's going to be additional impulse from this time of maximum deformation as these two blocks push apart from each other. So we have another impulse, and we're going to call that impulse the restoration impulse the blocks are being restored to their original shape. And again, for shorthand, I'm going to call that restoration impulse R. So now that we have the picture of this laid out, let's go ahead and try and define these impulses using the definition we came up with a couple of videos ago. The impulse here that we're calling D is going to be an integral over time of our force. To have a positive impulse, we need to have a force in the positive x direction. So we're looking at this force of A acting on B. So we're going to integrate from time 1 to time 1.5 the force of A acting on B with respect to time. The way we have this drawn, there's going to be some extra time between T1 and T1.5 where these aren't touching and there's no force. That's fine. The force will just be zero at that point and we don't care. Now the force of BA is equal and opposite to the force of A acting on B. So we can write this as just the equal and opposite deformation since we're integrating over the same time period for the force of B acting on A. So now let's go ahead and write out the restoration impulse. So it's going to look very similar to the deformation impulse, except we're going to be integrating from time 1.5 up to time 2. Now it's important to realize that as these things get pushed together, the force of A acting on B is going to be positive. And as these things are being pushed apart, the force of A acting on B is still going to be positive. It's still going to be pushing B forward. Likewise, through the entire time, B is going to be pushing A backward. 
So we don't need to change anything about this equation except for the limits of integration. So this is going to be the integral from t1.5 up to t2. And we can write the force of b acting on a in very much the same way. All right, so what are we trying to do with this? We're trying to get to the coefficient of restitution, which means that we need to be thinking about some velocities. So we can get from this impulse to a difference in velocity by using the conservation of momentum equation. From time 1 to time 1.5, this deformation impulse is causing a decrease in the momentum of VA and an increase in the momentum represented by VB. So let's start with VB first. So this deformation impulse is equal to the change in momentum for this block B. So we can write that as MB VB 1.5 minus MB VB 1. It's important to notice here that we're not talking about the conservation of momentum of the entire system. We're actually zooming into a single block. So that's why the equation looks a little bit different than what we had before. We're saying that this impulse, this integral of the force with respect to time, is causing some change in the momentum. And we can do the exact same thing for block A, except the force here is actually negative. So D is the same quantity, but it's causing a negative force. The momentum change is going to be the negative of that caused in block B. So we can write this as a negative MA VA 1.5 plus ma va1. And now that we have that, we can write the same for the restoration impulse. And the only difference here is that we're going to be replacing 1.5 with 2 and 1 with 1.5. Okay, so now our goal is to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to recognize that we said that these velocities at time 1.5 are exactly the same. Instead of keeping them separate, I'm going to define a new name just v to represent this velocity. So that means that I can replace these four terms with this velocity v. So we have things in terms of velocities now. A coefficient of restitution is simply the ratio of these two impulses, the restitution impulse divided by the deformation impulse. And I want to show you that this is equivalent to what we've been using in the other videos. So let's go and write this out. I'm going to write this out twice, once for block B and once for block A. So let's start off with block B. I'm going to use the definition of the restoration impulse. And I made a mistake here, so I'm going to go fix that. So the mass of the block B multiplied by its velocity at time 2 minus mass of the block B multiplied by the shared velocity V divided by mass of the block B multiplied by the shared velocity v minus mass of the block b multiplied by the velocity of b at 1. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for block a. Now to simplify, I'm going to divide the left-hand side of the equation through by this mb just to get rid of the mass term. And the same with ma on the right. And then I can write that our coefficient of restitution is equal to what's left over on this left-hand side. And what I'd like to do here is solve for v, or something close to v, and then have that to plug into this right-hand side so we can get our e in terms of everything but this v term. So I want to get rid of v in this equation. So I can rearrange this to say that ve minus VB1 times E is equal to VB2 minus V. I can move the V to the left-hand side and the VBE to the right-hand side, and we end up with VE plus V is equal to VB2 plus VB1 times E. Now, I can do the exact same thing for the A's. E is going to be equal to a negative VA2 minus V over a negative V minus VA1. So I can cancel out these negatives, and we have the exact same arrangement that we have up here. So I'm going to skip this intermediate step and end up with VE plus V is equal to VA2 plus VA1 times E. These two are obviously equal, so that means that these two have to be equal. So now all we need to do is isolate E 
and we can solve for e with respect to only the velocities. I'm going to subtract VA2 from both sides and subtract VB1E from both sides so that I can get those on either side of the equation. So what does that look like? We have VB2 minus VA2 is going to be equal to VA1E minus VB1E, but I'm just going to write those in parentheses multiplied by E. Just take the E out via the distribution property. And then we can solve for E pretty readily, just dividing out by this term. So we end up as our final equation, E is equal to the difference in velocities after the collision divided by the difference in velocities before the collision. This equation was a direct result of our definition of E as the ratio of these two impulses. So using this definition produces exactly the same result as this definition that we have been using. Uh, the benefit of this is only that it has a more direct relationship to properties involved in this collision. The second equation is the equation that you'll use to actually solve problems, but this definition is useful because it's related much more cleanly to the properties of this collision itself.